Hey you guys, um, it's so funny, right? When the second I hit live, my dog has started whining. So I might have to pick him up if he keeps it up. Um, all right, so real quick, I want to say hello first of you guys who are watching on replay. I know that a lot of you guys are gonna catch it on replay, especially because I'm doing this actually a little bit late at night, later than I normally do. Um, and if, this is one of those things where this is like taking inspired action, right? Um, because I know that a lot of you guys um, have been in a situation like this probably where either someone that you know or possibly yourself um, at some point has been in a financial crisis. Like maybe you've been in a situation where you literally have more month than money. <laughs> um, and it's one of those things where it's like sometimes you feel like you're stuck financially you don't feel like um that there's really any way to even get out of the situation that you're in you know what i mean and um i want you to know i've been there so a lot of people don't know a big piece of our story um a, a while back probably about i want to say maybe 10 years ago we were on food stamps and i found myself in the welfare office um with our two kids and I wanna share with you guys the story, okay, about how that happened and what we did to get out of it. I mean, here's, here's the thing. A lot of people, especially around this time of year, okay, like right now it's fall, holidays are coming up. A lot of people this time of year start getting into kind of like freak out mode um, financially because you're starting to think about like, oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, holidays are coming up and there's more month than money and I don't even know how I'm going to, like I can barely even pay my mortgage. I can barely even afford my car payment, let alone gifts and like holiday events and buying a new outfit for a party that you were invited to or whatever, right? So here's the deal. I want to teach you guys, first of all, how to get out of that stuck mentality when it comes to money. And this is not going to be a whole diatribe about money mindset at all. I promise you. Um, I want to give you some real actual tools because some of you guys have actually, I mean, I've even heard from some people saying like, I want to do business. I want to do a network marketing company. I'm in love with the product. I want to join your team, but I don't have the money to get started. Now, like our, for example, like our, my business is free. However, like we really like it, it's easier if you're actually a product of the product. I feel like if, if you're able to use the product, I feel like it's easier to promote. However, you don't have to. And I'm about to tell you, don't use that as an excuse to not start your business. If you are in a situation where you literally don't have the money to start on the product that you want to promote, do not let that stop you from getting started. That is a no-no. And I'm gonna tell you how to actually launch your business before you even get on the product, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you that, but before I do, I really want to show you some things that you can do that may help you not be as stuck as you think you are, okay? So this is for any product, this is for any company, this is for any situation. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is hit the share button, share this out because here's the reality. There are people who follow you on social media who are in a situation where money is making them super stressed out and really, really they're freaking out, okay? But they're not posting that on Facebook. They're not telling you that this is a problem. They're not telling you it's keeping them up at night. They're not telling you this is what makes them cry in the shower. They're so stressed out, they can't even breathe sometimes. They're not telling you that. Maybe it's you. You're not posting that all over the place. What I want you to do is I want you to share this out because if this message can help even just one person figure out how to get unstuck and move forward, whatever that means for them, you and I both, if you're sharing this, you and I both could be a catalyst to help somebody create a ripple effect. I talk about that a lot. You don't know. You don't know what a huge impact we can make together, okay? So hit the share button. I'm not gonna talk about companies or anything like that, but I do wanna talk about concepts, okay? So um, a little bit about my story. Like I just launched my website. You can read the like a whole about me section if you want the full on full meal deal. My link is in my bio. Um, I don't talk about company or anything like that either, but a long time ago, um, so I have been in direct sales or network marketing most of my adult life actually. So um, I have actually been on the field. 
um, as a rep, as a promoter. I've also worked as an advisor as like a consultant role um, and for corporate teams, for, uh, like for top leader teams and for corporate teams. I've worked with like legal teams, I've worked with compliance teams, with marketing teams, with starter teams, I've worked with startups, I've worked with long-term teams, uh, long-term companies. I've kind of seen like all the guts, right? I've, I've seen the dreams, the screams, the in-betweens as they say. Um, and I love it all. I love this industry. I love the direct sales industry. I love so many different companies. I love so many different products. I love so many different leaders in all these companies. Like it's, it's legit. Like I literally love and eat, sleep, breathe this industry. Y'all all know that if you follow me on here. Um, so I was, it was probably, um, oh gosh, let's see. My daughter was like two. So it was probably like early 2000s ish. Um, where I decided that I would take my neighbor up on her invitation to go to a home party. <laughs> home party. I went to this home party um, and it was a kitchen product party. And at the time, like I had a toddler and a baby and um, we were just we were kind of like in that position where we didn't like need the money um but i definitely wanted some extra fun money i wanted money to like take the kids to target and not have to like interfere with our family budget i wanted to be able to contribute financially i was a stay-at-home mom and um you know for like date nights and stuff like that it was just hobby kind of stuff right my husband had a great job great career it was it was uh, like going up it was it was great and then 2008 hit in 2008 uh, kind of like the bottom fell out, the wheels fell off the bus, like that kind of thing. And it was around that time, I have to ask my husband, it was around that time where um, we, he got laid off. We made a, a move across the country. He was laid off. He was out of work for multiple months and um, unemployment was like not enough. Unemployment um, eventually like was running out um, and that is like the ticking time bomb. You know what I mean? Like that's how it really felt. And um, so yeah, I I was in the welfare office with my two kids and nice car. We had a nice car, I had nice clothes. Um, you know, good things happen or bad things happen to good people, <laughs> right? And um, it's just one of those situations. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever been in that situation, but I was in the welfare office. We were applying for like food stamps, um, all of that kind of stuff. We were in Texas at the time. They call it a Texas Lone Star card. And at the time I had this hobby business, right? Where it was doing home parties, kitchen type parties. I had started up that business as a hobby just to make a little extra fun money at the time until you know the what <laughs> hits the fan and then you have to do something different to change your situation, right? So I, I had a decision, and this is what I wanna to talk to you guys about, about the decision that you have if you're in a situation where you are, where, where the funds are just not there, money's just not there. It's like the budget is way too tight on paper. It does not make sense financially how you're gonna live, <laughs> um, let alone do anything fun and that kind of stuff. And that's the kind of situation we were in. So we had a decision to make, okay? The decision was, we can ride it out and just see what happens and hope and pray that something falls magically in our lap and we'll just, you know, kind of like be um, on that wave as it comes. Or what we decided to do, and this sounds super crazy, like looking back, I was like, what in the world was I thinking? It was seriously God, because this is crazy. But at the time, we had no money. All we had was the card with food stamps on it, okay? So I decided to relaunch like a like a traditional business has like a re-grand opening right and so i decided to go to the grocery store and i was going to use my texas lone star card the food stamps card for food to throw a party <laughs> so i literally i will never forget it my husband he was helping me do this relaunch party and I used food stamp money and we bought like the ingredients to make these, um, these are like hors d'oeuvres that are like asparagus roll up um, hors d'oeuvres. And it was part of this product, uh, this company that I was a part of, it was one of the recipes we were supposed to cook for one of these parties. And anyways, I went to the grocery store to buy food for this party. My intent was, it's like a make it or break it, right? You gotta back yourself into a corner sometimes to really figure out what you're made out of. 
And um, all I needed, I need food for the party. I need people who trust me, who know me, who like me, and who just, you know, they, they know that I'm trustworthy. Um, and I just, I need I prayer. <laughs> Um, and anyway, so I, I went for it, right? And so it sounds crazy like looking back, like when you're dead broke, you're on food stamps, you throw a freaking party to launch a business. But I'll tell you what, what happened is that at that time, I had to like push my chips all in. I had to do something that was going to change our situation um, big time, you know? And anyway, so I... I hosted that party. I had several people come. They helped me relaunch that business and I literally pushed all of it in and I played full on. What happened from that is that that was a temporary that was a temporary situation. Right? The unemployment, all that kind of stuff, that was a very temporary situation. The mindset around that that I think a lot of people need to understand is that a lot of times you're going to go through situations in your life, you're going to go through situations in your relationship, in your in your in your job, in your employment, and every even if you have a network marketing business, you're going to go. It's like a roller coaster. You're going to go through situations where it's feast or famine sometimes, right? Especially as an entrepreneur, there's a mindset that you have to kind of have as an entrepreneur of figure it out. You have to be able to figure things out. One of the most things that I, I, I respect the most from certain people is when they're faced with a challenging situation and they don't sit there and wallow in it and like, oh, this really sucks, poor me, like shake my head, SMH, like all this kind of negative garbage that they put out there. Instead, they're like, oh, this is a situation I'm going through. I'm gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out. It's, not, it's just temporary, right? People sometimes go through these situations like financially and money and all this kind of stuff. Unemployment's really hard situations. And you either can be broke, which is a temporary situation. At the time, we were broke. It was a temporary situation. Or you can be poor. Oh, I don't have the money. Oh, I can barely pay my mortgage. Oh, I can't even do this. I can't even afford that. And it's never going to change. And this is just my life. And, da, 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 and it always happens. And it never fails. And always something. And it's that kind of talk. You probably know people who, hopefully, or, or hopefully it's not you, but you probably know people who say stuff like, oh, it never fails. Every time I get money, it's just always something, or my car is going to break down, or oh, that stuff always happens to me, or it never fails. So and so is sick again. My kid's sick again. It's just one of those perpetual things, almost as if they're expecting something bad to happen. It's like they're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And that is a poor mentality versus just being temporarily broke. That's no big deal. That happens to everybody. Being broke is just a temporary situation where the money does not match the month. <laughs> you got more month than money, okay? So the first thing I would say is you have to, if you're in a situation where finances are tight, you wanna do something to change your situation, and I say that intentionally do you actually want to change your situation because you'd be surprised i know a lot of people they really enjoy complaining about how broke they are but they never do anything to change it it's almost like they like it they like having something to complain about i know that sounds stupid and i know you're like if that's you you're like oh i never want to do that but listen do you really do you really though because if you're constantly complaining about a situation but you're not willing to do anything to change it do you really really want to change it. It's almost like, do you want to change it so badly as, as if you can breathe? Do you want to change it like as if you were drowning and you needed air? If you're complaining over and over for days, weeks, months, years, freaking decades, and you're not doing something about it, like I'm sorry to get on my soapbox, but y'all, like if, you, if that's you or somebody you know, they probably don't wanna change it. You know how you can tell the difference between somebody who's broke temporarily and poor eternally? It's what's going up on in here. It's how they think about it. I have been broke so many times in my life. Y'all would like freak out, seriously. So many times in my life. But you always kind of have to have a good attitude of like, whatever, it's just a temporary situation. We're gonna figure it out. We're smart. We've got the internet. We've got tools. We've got people who trust us. We can figure it out. I got brains. My husband and I are very smart. We will figure it out. So it's temporary. So therefore you can kind of have fun with the situation of like, hmm, it's like a new puzzle. How do we figure this out? Right? 
So in that situation, when like all we had was food stamps and welfare, I was kind of like looking around and I'm like, okay, what do I have to work with? And now here's what I want to give to you. This is like, you don't, y'all, don't go through challenging situations and get through it and keep it to yourself. You need to share it. Like, that's what I'm telling you guys, like hit share, share this out. Let me know, by the way, if you did that so I can say hi to you and give you a shout out. Um, because if you go through crap in your life and you are not sharing it with other people, like y'all, we can learn from each other. You can get ideas from other people. Maybe you share this with somebody who sees this and they're like, dang, that like actually saved my whole life <laughs> financially because it helps them move, get unstuck. So when we were in that situation, I was like, okay, what do we have to work with? What do we have in our toolbox that we already possess? Well, we have the kind of attitude where we know this is a temporary situation, we're smart, we can figure it out, we can make this work, okay? So what do we have to work with? All right, you have two choices. Two things that you can do if you're in a situation where you're totally broke but you actually wanna fix it. One, find money. Two, borrow money, <laughs> like finding money, right? Or save money, and I'm gonna show you how to do all this stuff, right? So in terms of finding money, look, if, if you're wanting to start a business or you need to do something that costs money and there is not, not money in your checking account, I want you to think beyond your checking account. Too many people stay stuck because it's like, oh, my checkbook register says I don't have any money, so therefore I can't do X, Y, Z. First of all, if you really want to do something, I want you to consider how serious it is for you. And I'm asking you that with in love, right? Because if let's just say you wanted to start a business and it costs, um, I don't know, let's just say you're like your starter package or whatever. There's, it's like a $400 package. Okay. Let's say you wanted to do that. <clears throat> now, thank you for sharing Missy. Um, if you wanted to do that, it costs $400. Okay. Now, if you were in a situation where it was life or death, thank you for sharing Carol. Um, where it was a life or death situation. Let's just say like somebody needed a blood transfusion in your family, your kid, your spouse, somebody you love needed a blood transfusion to save their life and it only costs $400, life or death. Could you figure it out? Could you figure it out? If you wanted to actually save your life or save someone's life and all it cost was $400, could you or would you figure it out? I would be willing to bet most of you could. You would borrow it. You would figure it out. You'd sell some stuff on Craigslist. You'd be like walking around your house going, I don't need that pillow, I don't need that picture, I don't need that widget, I don't need that decoration, I don't need that ottoman, that chair hasn't been sat in in seven years, I don't need that. <laughs> and you'd be like listing it on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace, on those buy, sell, swap groups. You'd be taking stuff to the pawn shop. You'd be like, I haven't worn that necklace in 17 years, those earrings are out of style. You'd be selling stuff for $2, for $5, for $10, for $17. You'd be selling every single thing that you possibly could could because you would raise the freaking funds to do what you had to do to save someone's life. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you do that? I would. But how many times have people said, oh, I'm too broke to do this business. I'm too broke to buy that product. I'm too broke to really like relaunch my whole life by starting something new. Even though they say they want to, they are actions say something totally different. Their actions are like, well, I mean, I really wanted to, but the money's not laying here in my lap or floating in the air in front of my face, so therefore I can't do it. But can they though? Is there something they can sell, they can pawn, they can borrow? Do they have any room on their credit card? I, I'm not a fan of credit card debt. I am not an advocate of going into debt. However, I am telling you right now, being able to put something on my credit card several years ago changed my life because I, I did it fully knowing intentionally. I was putting something on a credit card and I was backing myself into a corner on purpose because I knew I would work my face off to earn that money back plus some. Why? Because I had to. I had to. You don't have a choice. It was literally like life or death. I mean, obviously it wasn't that dramatic, but it was, it was like life or death. To me, that situation, I had two choices. I could stay the way it was or I could make something change. You have to make a change for something to change. So my question for people who say, oh, I can't afford to get started. Can you though? Can you really? Now, if you're actually in a situation where you're sitting in a place and you have absolutely nothing that you could 
spare to, to sell, to pawn, to get rid of? Do you have an extra chair? Do you have an extra ottoman? Do you have extra fluff throw pillows? How about that picture on the wall? Do you have anything at all, at all, that you can use to raise the funds? If not, I'm sure there's probably some of you, if not, if absolutely not, then you really have to figure it out because you are actually in an emergency, like people would actually consider that an emergency situation where if you had no ability to pay your water, you wouldn't have the ability to sustain life for three days without water. Do you know that? If you can't have enough money to actually keep the lights on, keep the water on, if you busted a tire and you can't replace it, how are you gonna get to work? If your water heater busts and you can't replace it, what are you gonna do? If you literally are in a situation where you don't have a couple hundred bucks disposable to do something that would absolutely help your life, you have to make a change. Now you are in that corner. You have to do something to make a change. That's the kind of situation we had found ourselves in. We were in that situation where, thank God, we actually had something that I don't like to use, but we had a little bit of room left on the last credit card in our name with just a wee little bit enough to put a, a starter package on that credit card and purposefully say, I have got to do this for real not just pretend, not just as a hobby, but like for real, for real, right? So I'm not a fan, I'm not advocating the use of going into credit card debt unless you can use your credit card as a tool, as a tool with a timeline. That is my thing about credit cards, use it as a tool and use it with a timeline. Thank you so much for sharing, Carol. Um, okay, so can you sell stuff? Can you pawn stuff? Can you borrow money from a friend? Can you borrow money from family? Is there anything you can do? Can you make something? Can you make crafts? Can you make baked goods? Depending on the laws in your city or your state, can you sell those baked goods? Can you sell food? Do you cross stitch? Do you do crochet? Can you do anything to bring in money? Also look at your budget. What do you have going out? Do you, if you're really in a dire situation, do you really need Netflix or Hulu? That'll save you like 15 bucks a month. Do you need the premium Spotify subscription? That'll save you $15 a month. Do you really need like hair coloring and uh, like uh, haircuts? Can you find a friend to like trade to do haircuts for you? Like look around, look like line item your budget out and figure out for that next month what fat do you have in your budget that you can trim? Listen, I've been a military wife. I'm good at cutting the fat. And when we have to, like when my husband and I sit down with our Excel spreadsheet and like go through line item of our budget, dude, we can make some drastic cuts in our budget. We can like slice it like we are expert level at that game. <laughs> because we've been in the military. Like we have been in a position where we have been so broke, it ain't even funny. And we've also been in positions of wealth and massive abundance, like more money than we know what to do with. We need to be able to give big. We've been in everywhere in between too, right? The purpose is that being broke is temporary. If you have the mindset of you could figure it out. So you've got to either find money, make money, like actually making it or save it, cut the fat, trim it out, and then you'll have more of it so that you can make decisions intentionally with that money that you have. Now, some of you are literally in a situation where you need to, hey Lisa, where you need to make a decision to do something that'll bring you money right now without spending any money. Now, there are certain network marketing companies that offer the ability for you to join that don't cost, you don't have to buy a kit where you can start earning money. Some of them are like that. There's, there's quite a few of them like that, okay? Here's what I'm gonna say to you. A lot of people get stuck because they think oh, I can't make money at a network marketing company. I can't work my business if I'm not on the product. Bull crap, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yes, you can. Don't let that keep you stuck. There's so many smart, amazing, awesome, influential people who could be awesome at their business, no matter whatever company you're falling in love with, 
Don't let that keep you stuck. Don't let that make you pause. Cause you guys, time is of the essence. If you wanna actually change your situation, you have to change your situation. So let me tell you how to do this if you literally, now don't use this as a reason to like not invest in your business and not invest in a kid. Cause I'm telling you right now, is it easier for you to influence someone to order a product that you believed in enough to freaking make it happen and figure it out and order the product yourself? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's a lot easier people. It's a lot easier to recommend a restaurant you've actually eaten at. It's a lot easier to recommend a movie you've actually eaten at. Trust me, is it impossible to do if you haven't? No, but it's, it's gonna be a smoother ride if you do, okay? so. How to start a business if you haven't ever ordered the product yet, you've got to have a couple things in place. First of all is your mindset. You've got to know that you can do this because think about this for a second. Think about the guys who like are dealers for Maserati. Maserati, Maserati is a very expensive car. Porsche, Lexus, Mercedes, Cadillac, BMW, Tesla. Okay, like all the fancy schmancy cars. Whatever, even even more expensive. Rolls Royce. Okay, let's let's think of like big fancy expensive cars. Do you actually think that every single person who works at a dealership selling those cars actually physically owns one themselves? No. No, they don't. So how do they do it? Training on how to sell those products and social proof. The product works. They don't need they don't need to drive the car themselves to know that the product works. Hello, it's a Tesla, it's a Maserati, it's a Lexus. It's a it, they've got social proof. <laughs> they got millions of people who are saying they love the product. So does the car salesman need to actually drive the product before you'll trust him to be able to buy one? No. Why? Because he's had training. He's been coachable. He's been leadable. He's implementing the training that his mentors gave to him of here's how you sell a car that you've never owned. And you can use other people's experiences on this product, with this product, okay? That's how they're doing it. So same thing as like MacBook. Do you really think that the 17, 18, 19 year olds all working at the Apple store all have these $5,000 computer setups? No, they do not. How do they sell them? Training, there are people above them. The mentors told them exactly how to use the systems, how to sell the product, and they have social proof. The product works. People use them. People love them. Do they personally need to? No. I bet you. I bet you. Ninety percent of those guys. I bet you they use a PC. <laughs> okay. So your mindset. You have to know you can sell something that you're not personally using or doing yourself. You can if you have the trainings in place. If your mentors have set up systems and processes and all kinds of stuff for you, okay, that's big. If you have the mentality of, I'm gonna figure it out, I'm gonna figure it out, I'm a doer, I'm an action taker, I'll figure it out, I'm in, I'm, I can reverse engineer stuff, like listen, I'm smart, okay, you gotta have that. And you have to know, how can I use the tools and be excited about other people's experiences? If the only thing that excites you is your own personal experience on a product or in a car or on a supplement or with a service, if the only way you can get excited about sharing it with somebody else is if it's personally doing something for you, you're out. That's not an entrepreneurial spirit. If you can get excited, like an empathetic excitement, when you hear someone else's experience, when you hear someone else's story, your heart fills up and you're like, wow, that's really awesome for them. If that stuff excites you, if seeing someone's before and after picture is like, good for them. If you have any bit of that, you can do this. So here's what you need. If you are not able to, like really actually able to, even like you squeeze it, you finance it, you force it, you make it, you find it, okay? If you really have to do this absolutely free without buying a single thing, here's how to do it. One, you need to get in touch with your mentor and have them plug you into the tools and the trainings and the systems that they have in place that are proven to work for the people who have been successful. Two, leverage other people's stories. The people who sell Tesla, Maserati, Porsche, Lexus, Mercedes, all those kinds of people, they are using social proof, other people's reviews, other people's experiences to sell those cars. You can do that with any product that you love. I don't care what it is. You, if you have people who love the product, who are using the product, 
and you have systems and tools in place for you to be able to share that with excitement and leverage other people's stories and experiences, you are equipped to do this, okay? You need to have the kind of language that comes across as influential and excitable, okay? So when you're talking to someone, you aren't going to lie to them and say, oh yeah, I've been using the product for three years, when you haven't. You can absolutely though say, I'm looking for some friends to do this with me. I'm about to order two. Let's all order together so that we can create kind of like an accountability fun group and do this together and compare notes. I'm excited to order this because I've heard so many great things about this product. I'm excited to order this because I've seen so many pictures in that private group about people's results and people's experiences. I'm excited to get started with the service because it's helping people save so much money. Whatever your company, whatever your product is, if you have stories to leverage and the mindset of you can do it because you have that kind of like empathetic excitement, you can do this. You have to though, you have to leverage the trainings, the systems, the stories, the tools. You have to have those things in place. So all of that said, do not let a temporary, temporary position of being broke make you stay stuck in a permanent situation of a poor person's mentality. The difference between being broke and being poor is literally mindset. Your brokenness is seriously just temporary. It's waiting for you to figure it out. It's waiting for you to create your own breakthrough. I have literally been on food stamps in a welfare office and I have actually experienced financial freedom. How did I get from point A to point B? Because I knew I could and I knew I'd figure it out. I knew I had the support. I knew I had the systems. I knew I had the tools. I knew I've got a brain. I've There's products out there. Listen, there's a bunch of network marketing companies. There are a bunch of products out there. There are a bunch of compensation plans that empower you and equip you to say yes, to sign up, to get started, to start earning money for your family as few as maybe even a week from now. You literally can do that. The only thing that is stopping you is your decision that you need to make to do it. And that is just, that is an internal thing that you're gonna have to decide. Can you do it? Yes. Will you do it? That's up to you. That is literally up to you. So I would encourage you guys, share this out. If you are in network marketing, if you're in direct sales, I would love for you to share this out to your teams. You are welcome to share this with anybody who's considering joining your team. They're like, I don't know if I can do this if I can't afford the product right now. Yes, you can. Talk, take it from an outsider. <laughs> yes, you can. I don't care what business you're talking about. I don't care what company you're talking about. I don't care what product you're talking about. Yes, you can. Your sponsor, if they have tools, if they have trainings, if they have success stories before you, yes, you can. You need to say yes to that person. You need to say, I am coachable. I am leadable. I am figure it outable. I will do what you tell me to do. Just get me started without costing any money. But if you can afford it, if you can figure it out, if you can buy it, if you can borrow it, if you can find it, if you can make it, if you can sell something to make it happen, do it because it is a much smoother road um, being a product of the product. Okay. So if you've caught this on replay, just type replay below. If you're able to watch this live, say hi. If you shared this out, let me know. I'll come back and say hi to you guys in the comments. Um, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I'm just trying to help uplift and inspire this whole community. What we have in network marketing and direct sales is so special, you guys. It is an opportunity that is equal opportunity for everybody. If there's a compensation plan that even two people are winning in, you can do this. It is seriously like Cody Bateman said in one of his books, it doesn't matter if you're from Yale or from jail. <laughs> I love that. It's the truth. It's equal opportunity. It does not matter your race, your background, your education level, your gender, your color. None of that stuff matters. What matters is up here and up here. That's all that matters. Do it. Get with the person who's talking to you about your business. Make it happen. If you are that person who's trying to share this with somebody and they're stuck, help share this video with them so they can help themselves get unstuck. And I'll see you guys on another video. I love you all. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye y'all.